Hey everybody. It's been a while since I've been on Facebook. Um, I'm not going to invite anybody. It's just who happens to show up. It's good to see you. Uh, I haven't done one in a little bit. But I, there are some things that's been on my mind for a little bit. For maybe two or three days now. So I'm not going to be up here long. I just wanted to speak on it for a few minutes. Only because it's what I've been struggling with for the last couple weeks. Hey baby. Waving at you. And um. It comes from a scripture. And it's from 2 Timothy 1 and 7. And it says. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. But of power and of love. And of a sound mind. I always going to refer back to the Bible. Because I was raised on it. I believe in it 100%. It's what's helped me stay focused and um, find some peace and some understanding and gain some level of um, consistency in my life so that I'm seeing myself grow instead of uh, consistently moving backwards. So uh, what I wanted to speak on is that part where he speaks on the spirit of fear. Because I always hear people say, and they make all kinds of, um, give little, cute little things on how to spell out fear and so that you won't be intimidated by it. And I think there is a difference between being fearful and having a fearful moment out of a human reaction and just having a spirit of fear where you're afraid of almost everything, everything and anything. When I think about my own life, because I'm going to bring it home, I don't think I have a spirit of fear. There was a time where I did have it to struggle with, where I struggled with the spirit of fear, where it was always coming at me when anything I tried to do it was like a, um anxiety that would come over, where I would pretty much talk myself out of doing it because of fearful reasons and fearful reasoning. But I don't have that now. But there is a sense of fear that comes up now whenever you go to do anything. And I think that that's not the fear that God was speaking of. The one that he was, hey, Sarita, the one that he was speaking against is the spirit of fear. The spirit of it being spooked out it, to the point where you're frozen and you can't move and uh, you're scared of what people are going to think, scared of what they're going to say, scared of how, if you're going to fail, if you're going to make it, that kind of fear that kind of takes over your um, natural instincts and movement in this planet on why you were created. You were created, we were created, I was created to um, procreate in many different ways. Not just, okay, I'm going to go to church or find something to attach myself to and rot it out. It's that movement into your own personal understanding of your purpose of being here. When I think about it for myself, the only thing that has really been a big challenge for me is understanding that fear is needed just like anything other emotion that we experience. If you weren't afraid of anything, all kind. Who knows what we would be in? We get into a bunch of stuff without fear. Can you imagine what you, when you have the fear? Rather, imagine what you'd have got into it if there was no fear of anything. Yeah. Hey, Sharon, you have to have some fear of something, something of a remembrance or memory of something that happened to you that jars your attention that says, "Listen, don't do this." Or this could happen. And that's the healthy fear. Not many people know that. Or, or even. I won't say know that. Because I think all of us know it. It's just sometimes hearing it. And hearing it said. Kind of snaps us back into reality. Where you feel. Understand. Listen. I'm fearful for a reason. There's something about it that's making me. A healthy fear. That's right Sarita. The something's not right and I need to figure out what's happening so that when I make steps that I'm making steps that are going to be for my good and not undo everything that I've been trying to do in my life. So I think that 
in dealing with it on these past couple weeks and dealing with the fear of it and the anxiety of um, am I making a good choice, am I not making a good choice, it puts you in perspective as to where you are mature-wise, your level of maturity, first of all, understanding that you're going to have hard times. There's no going to be no such thing on this planet as long as you're alive that you're not going to have opposition, that you're not going to have people that speak against you, do things against you. That's never going to happen, where that you're just going to ride off into the sunset and everything's going to work out. That's never going to happen. Making peace with the fact that there's going to be opposition solely based on the fact that you are trying to move outside and do what it is that you are supposed to do while you're here on this planet. The most disheartening thing for me has been just the people that you thought that would be there for you, would be the ones cheering you on, don't end up being those people. They will very well be the people that will make decisions to go the other way. And when I say the other way, I mean it in the terms of they're either going to support you or they ain't going to support you. You can't do a whole lot about that because you can't make anybody decide anything. But understanding that God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The end of is what's most important to me. Because there's layers to it. He hasn't given us a spirit of fear. He gave us a spirit of power. And of love. Which in turn brings about a sound mind. To make sound decisions for yourself. And for the plan that he has for your life. Because it's only going to benefit us. And the plans you have for yourself. That hopefully coincide with God. Because without that um, connection, I personally don't believe that you're going to achieve. And you may achieve it, but you won't feel the wholeness of the achievement. The completeness of an achievement. Um, my grandma used to say dying, about dying in peace. And I think that's what she was referring to. That you die whole understanding that I did what I was supposed to do when I was here and I not only achieved it but I was happy I found love and I loved people I took care of people and people took care of me I had a good balance in my life it wasn't this and this and then uh, well I'm okay in this part and then that part I'm not that blue. but there's a balance and finding that balance is so difficult nowadays and only because we are not people who like to internalize and really make decisions based off of what we genuinely feel in our hearts. Which leads me to my next point about making decisions that everybody may or may not agree with. That for me was the hardest part. Only because I have been a people pleaser a large majority of my life. And I know there are some people who say, honey, you've always done what you wanted, which is not true. I've done what I wanted only out of rebellion sometimes. Just sheer rebellion. And it didn't have anything to do with what I wanted to do, but I was rebelling against the control in some way. Which makes you... Not of a sound mind. That's an excellent example. That's the example of not having a sound mind. Because you're making decisions based off of, well, I don't want to feel controlled, so I'm going to do this just to keep you from feeling like you have control over me. And looking up the word, because I do this all the time. If I don't fully understand, and you might have heard a word a thousand times, but don't know how to apply it or how it applies to the situation that you are currently in. And when I looked it up, all it is is just words that are expressed 
based on the fact that you put some thought and energy into it that were conducive with someone who has a rational thought process and it makes sense the thought makes sense the idea makes sense that's what the sound mind is is absent of fear is absent of confusion is absent of oh I'm not sure is absent of all those things these are sound moves and steps that you are making and taking that just makes sense it makes sense for me to write a book I went to school for I don't know how long to for creative writing that just makes sense why would you spend that much money to go to school and then don't never do anything with it so that's what I'm talking about that's the example of it and I wanted to say this too when dealing with struggling with fear and anxiety which I know a whole lot about the sadness that comes with it the unsurety that comes with it can only be reconciled with you and God there is nobody that can talk you out of it there's nothing you can read or listen to that can talk can change you on the inward parts to where as though you have a deeper understanding of why you are full of anxiety or stress or any of that other stuff those negative energies that come from just simply making a decision about some of the simplest things sometimes Losing people in your life, supposedly missed opportunities, um, family issues, relationship issues, work issues, all of that stuff can bring about such an anxiety because you don't feel like you're up to par for it. Or this is overwhelming. It's too much for me. But just remembering that he has not given us a fit spirit of fear, but a power of love, which is bigger than anything else. And the love for yourself overrides what people think. And of a sound mind. And he's given us power too. And thank God for his power. Because even breaking power down in an example, I would say this. For me, power is the exertion of my understanding to a subject. There are times as a female, as a black female, that I've had to exert the power that God gave me with a logical mind and everything to let people know you are not going to diminish me down to a woman or a black woman or anything else just so that you can so-called put me in my place that's the power that God gave us to control ourselves and our surroundings what we allow to bring into our space I don't have no power over how you feel about me don't have that but I have the power to confront things deal with things head-on Praying for the best outcome, but either way, if it goes well, if it don't go well, how I plan it or how you plan it, then so be it. But um, that's the power that was given to us. And many people use that, that expression um, that prayer is a powerful tool, and I totally agree. Some things you do just have to pray about it and move forward from it and leave it alone because it's not beneficial to keep wilding in it and keep trying to figure it out even in your own mind because some of us will leave people alone but we still got it in our minds where we're thinking about the situation and how can I resolve this and how can I do this but understanding that if it's meant for you to speak on it be in it it'll happen and if it don't happen you have to move on you just have to move on there's no getting around that. And finding the strength within yourself is understanding that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 
of a good sound mind. If you still have your sound mind after everything you've been through in your life, that is something to thank God for. Because there are many people that I know who struggle with mental illness on many different levels. And truth be told, a depression is a mental illness. And many of us have struggled from depression. I know I have. I've struggled with it. Trying to make sense out of it. Trying to shake it off and get up and act like nothing's wrong and all. And I've gone through that whole process. And I'm still going through it in some levels. Because my life is still moving forward. I'm still alive. I'm still here. But I know that... I don't have to be fearful of what's happening to me. And I'm not going to tell no story to y'all. There are some days I get up and I'm scared to death about things. Oh, Jesus, how is this going to work? How is that going to work? How am I going to make this happen? And even sometimes my stillness and trying to just be still and be quiet um, brings about a fear. Because then you feel like you should be doing something. Why aren't you doing something? I've learned that he who has begun a good work in us, he will see it through. He'll help us get through it. That is a spiritual thing that so many people believe in because it was taught to us. It's living it out every day, every second of the day. 365 days a year is where the struggle comes in. And I think what hurts us the most is because you can have those kinds of struggles and not have another human being that's willing to see that struggle and say, you know what, I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to be there to, and try to support you, to give you the strength that you need. If it ain't no more than a phone call and a word or or just to send you something with a smile and say, hey, I was just thinking about you. It's our lack of support for each other. Is why many of us are struggling mentally with um, depression and fear. The spirit of fear. Because we will not help each other. We will not be there for each other. And then we get fearful of each other because it's like, well, I don't want to get hurt by them. I'm tired of putting myself out there and then people treat you any kind of way. And trust me, I totally understand that. But I do believe this much, that we can, God has blessed us with somebody. I don't believe for a second that he hasn't left us with nobody. That there's a person on this planet that can say there is nobody on this planet that I can go to. Might not be who you want. But if we will allow ourselves to open up our hearts and our minds, we will see that God will open a door for somebody to come into our lives that understands our struggle, that understands how to speak to those um, places of discouragement and sadness and disappointment in our lives. And sometimes it only takes us to stop to humble ourselves and stop feeling like you got it all together. Because that's what is portrayed so many times on social media and the world and the news. Oh, we got it together. Everybody's got it together. Everybody's moving. Everybody got a plan. Everybody's building an a empire. Everybody, oh, I'm making my coins and boom, I'm fine and we good over here and all that kind of stuff. You close the door to any help that you may have needed or wanted. Even with connections for a business if you're trying to open up a business if you're trying to move if you carry that attitude that energy is going to close you right in well if you got it all together and you know everything you don't need any help from the god or the universe or anybody else for that nature you close the door you just made it like you just you're fine you don't need anybody you figured out how to be an island You figured it out. You got the whole thing down pat. And I thank God for the grace and mercy that helps me understand that it doesn't matter how many gifts and talents I have. I need people. I don't need everybody. Let's not get that twisted. I don't need everybody. But I need people and I need people in my life that have my best interest at heart. And I thank God I've been blessed with those people. There aren't many. 
all three of them. But I have them, and I tell the Lord, thank you for them. I tell God, thank you for them. And I have other people who are an inspiration to me, who may not be in my life closely, but their lives is an example of hope and strength and courage and all those different things that I need. Because I, that's, or I think too, we have to understand people's places in our lives. We have to have a place. Because if you don't, honey, it's a playground in your mind. And if you can imagine all the people that you've met in your life, all the thoughts and experiences that you've had in your life, and picture it as a playground. Where there's children of all kinds, shapes, colors, and sizes. Just running around. Some's on the jungle gym. Some's on the swing. Some's on the boom. And that's what it becomes in our minds. A playground. Where people just come to play. And you have to control that. I have to control that in my own mind. Is it complicated? It can be if you're not willing to be courageous and be fearful, fearless enough to say, well, you know what? This is your place in my life. This is your place in my life. This is my place in your life. And so forth and so on. And keep people in their place. If it's one thing we learned about social distancing through this whole um, pandemic is this. It ain't hurt nobody stay away from each other, honey. Truth be told, it made it better. The more we stayed away from each other, the less disease we spread. And then we can somehow get back to normal at some point. Am I right or wrong? At some point, you get to come back. Because now you've restored some order. You restored order not just in uh, your life, but your society. And who you are becomes much clearer to you and the people around you. Because sometimes people don't understand us because we kind of don't understand ourselves and we don't understand our purpose and we really don't know how to channel our own energies into um, our own personal, um, what's the word, our own personal uh, drives and dreams and focus on those things and it will cause anxiety when you've got all these voices in your ear telling you do this do that but go here go there but you should be doing this you should be doing that and you shouldn't have this by now or you should have this by now you shouldn't be here by now you should already be gone by then you, you can't move like that in peace that's too much in anybody's head your body's not right because you're on social media and you look and see everybody looks like a doll baby and everybody looks like Ken. It's like now I'm sitting here spending all this time trying to fix myself up so that I look a certain way so that I can fit in. Spending money that you really sh should be saving. Speaking to myself, honey, now I'm not just talking about y'all. That you should be saving on things that aren't even necessary. Because if the goal is to find your purpose and live it and move in it and be a blessing to the people around you and your family, people will come to you anyway. People are drawn to light. They're scared to death of the dark. It's the darkness that's most fearful because you can't see in it. You can't see anything in it. But anything that is dispelling light even in your most fearful moments, you'll go to wherever you see a light. It's been a trying time, y'all. So I ask you to still please pray for me because um, trying to be open to learn and grow and mature and be a real human being and not one that you just create in your own mind, it's really not that easy. It is necessary because I believe God wants us to realize that we are real people real people with real lives real feelings real emotions real everything real experiences that if we would learn to glean from those experiences and those um, peoples that we have come in contact with 
and not drain them and not let them drain us. I think maybe one day that probably needs to be broken down too because some we under we misconstrue what that means to drain somebody of their energy. Cuz everybody thinks that every time somebody tells you something that's right, then that's a negative energy, honey. I can't blah, blah. That's not a negative energy. That's not a negative or every time somebody says something good to you, that's a positive energy. When the Bible pretty much tells us that you should be careful about people who are always complimenting you all the time because they set a net for your, a trap for your feet. You should be leery of every time you turn around they got something good to say. Oh, you're so great, you're so good, you're this, you're that. And the next thing you know, honey. The... But anyway, that's another subject. Thank you guys for hanging in here with me. I said I wasn't going to be long. I just wanted to get that off my chest. And I hope it helped somebody. I really do because it was a struggle for me with dealing with it and uh, David has been trying to get me to go back writing for good lord almost a month now and whenever I start writing this is just a short story and then I'm done whenever I start writing and just speaking of my own story a fear and an anxiety would come over me to where I'd be like oh I can't because the memories of not just the bad things, but the good things. Then you start to compare them with what's happening to you now. and you know. So God was showing me, you have to have that balance, honey, with the past and the future. So that your present is not screwed up. And it just showed me where I was mature-wise. In my understanding about life and how it works and how it goes. That our experiences in our lives are not there so that you can hold on to them like they were the best times in the world and there's nothing else great that could be greater than that. There's always going to be a greater time, a, a better time, a worse time, a, a, even a difficult time. It's always going to be. And if you try to portray a false existence, you will never know what a real one is like. It, life does not work that way. You cannot present and create a false existence. And then wonder why your life is nowhere near as fulfilling as you thought it would be. You have to stay real with yourself and with the people around you so that you can maintain respect for yourself and people can remain, maintain that respect for you. That's it and that's all. A real one. Exactly. I'm not sure who did that, wrote that because I can't see it, but a real life. And I prayed and asked God some years ago, Lord, I want a real life. I don't want to create one in my mind and try to fit everything and everybody into this space that I created in my mind, who I want for a friend. I want my friends to be real friends because I accept them for who they are. They don't have to be rich. They don't have to be poor. They can be themselves. They don't have to fall into some mode where I only connect with people who's doing this and doing that. And blah, blah, blah. I have friends of all nature. Some of them believe in God. Some of them don't. Some of them are struggling with addiction. Some of them are not. Some of them are saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Some of them believe in Allah. Some of them don't believe in nothing. My criteria is to love people like I want to be loved and respect them like I want to be respected. I don't want anybody sitting around me and I can't trust what comes out of your mouth. And I can't trust that what you're saying is real. That behind the scenes and your little secret thoughts, you're hoping something happens to me. That's all to bring me down off of this horse that you think I'm on. I'm the only, not the only one that feels that way because you know plenty of us have people around us who feel like, oh, you're on some uh, high horse where you think you're better than anybody every time you try to better yourself or do something different. You don't want to be around nobody who cannot respect the fact that every human being on this planet should be growing and maturing. That's why our society is as screwed up as it is because we think that you're not woke if you believe in certain things and if you this is what makes you woke and that's what makes you woke and you know and it's just constantly badgering and beating each other down about everything that we believe is the right way to be 
I don't think anybody has a right to tell you that. You have a right to sit on this planet and live on this planet, rather, and become what God created you to be through his guidance, through people, through our experiences. And that way, when we move on to the other side, whether you believe you go to heaven or not, but you've lived a complete and whole life. And that's my goal. That's my only goal. And hard decisions have to be made. doesn't make no difference um, about nothing now, truth be told. They have to be made. Or they make you. You make the decision or the decision is going to make you one way or the other one. So I hope I've said something that was um, helpful. Because truthfully, just talking about it has kind of helped me a little bit more and put things a little bit more in perspective to understand that I don't have to um, be afraid of anything. Not riding, not losing, not winning, not people's thoughts, not my own thoughts. <sighs> And I tell God, thank you for it. And just know I'm praying for you guys. And please pray for me too. And um, like I said, I hope this was a blessing. It's good to see all of you. Thank you for supporting and watching. All right. Have a good day, you guys. And happy Friday.